The Murray Art Exhibition was a week-long exhibit which took place in the Nucleus Gallery situated in Alhambra, California and ran from August 5th all the way to August 11th. It was a free to attend event and pictures of the exhibition could be freely viewed on their website. However, the most noteworthy thing about this gallery that means the most to me isn't the displays, nor the announcements, nor the comics, nor the pictures. One of the exhibits was a giant sketch of Omori, which featured this semi chaotic blend of concept arts, in game cutscenes, and early content. I'm sure that most of you already know the story by now, but for those that don't, take a look at it. What do you see? I mean, really, really try to look. Did you see it? When the Omori game ended, I felt this gaping, empty void inside my heart. What's gonna happen next? They forgive him? What they do afterwards? It's these questions that would haunt me for the next few weeks to come, and I thought I'd never get over it. Long ago, I'd given up hope on finding an actual answer. This is probably why I hate open-ended stories so much. Seeing the answers I desired for so long get taken away from me so close to the finishing line. At this point, I wouldn't even have cared if they didn't forgive Sunny. I just wanted answers, some kind of definite conclusion. This is the closest we've been to an actual answer. Seeing the reactions on everyone's faces, Hero's anger, Aubrey's sense of betrayal, and seeing Kel, usually the happiest go lucky guy in the room, wearing such a sad expression on his face. You're probably thinking I'm being a little bit melodramatic going crazy over a few drawings, sketches even, <laughs> and you're probably right. This was genuinely one of the biggest surprises I had while researching this video. I just realized that we may never really get a proper answer. Am I okay with it? No. No. I don't think I'll ever be, but there's still so much we could do. If Sunny's forgiveness is not a given, then could he be forgiven? What are the chances that he'd be forgiven? This is a question that has been running through my mind again and again these last few months. And to answer this question, we must first go back to that day. Back to the day of the recital. Back to that day when she died. The wall of a broken vial of a fight idea, hopeless and support, betrayal, hope and a conscious belief, of anguish, guilt, hands. Photo of a wall. You heard some scoffing from behind the wall, but paid it no notice. You were in no mood to focus. You were overcame. You were sick of everything. You know it wasn't a big deal, but you couldn't control yourself. photo of a broken violin. Your precious violin lay shattered at the bottom of the staircase. You threw it in a rage. Your fingers were shaking in pain, practicing over and over. But you still make mistakes after mistakes. This was all a bad idea. Photo of an argument. Murray was yelling at you. You couldn't understand what she was saying. She didn't understand you at all. She didn't understand that you just weren't good enough. The only thing you hold on to was your anger. This pain. Was it her fault? Photo of a fight. Mari blocked your path. She says that she isn't finished talking. She tells you not to run away. But why not? You did this all for her. Why was she yelling at you? You didn't understand. Photo of a murder. You lose all sense and push her down the staircase. Photo of silence. You watched Mari crush on top of your broken violin. 
The sound wakes you up to nothing but silence. You called out to her, but she doesn't answer. Your heart sinks into your stomach. Photo of panic. It, it happened in an instant. You didn't mean to do that. Well, well, you did mean to push her, didn't you? It was an accident, right? You're not sure. You tremble your way down the staircase. Photo of desperation. You call her name, but she doesn't answer. You sweep the bits of wood from her body. Nothing but scratches. You turn her around and see her face. She looks asleep. But then why isn't she answering? Photo of an accomplice. You pick up Mari and drag her up the stairs. She feels lighter than you think. She just needs to lie down in a bed. She just needs some rest. Photo of disbelief. Your heart beats out of your chest. Your head feels fuzzy. You lose vision. You push the door to the bedroom open and make your way to her bed. She she's going to be okay, right? This is just a dream, right? Photo of anguish. You call her name over and over, but she doesn't answer. You watch the light from the window cast a shadow over her face. She's expressionless. You sink your fingers into her arm and break down into tears. Photo of guilt. You want to scream for help, but you're afraid. You mumble to yourself. What if they ask what happened? There's no way you can tell them the truth. Who would be able to forgive him? Who would believe that it was an accident? Photo of an idea. A whisper comes from behind you, but you ignore it. A cry comes from behind you, but you ignore it. You cover your face with your arms. This isn't real. None of this is real. Why won't you wake up? Photo of hopelessness. Everything appears dark. The shadows slither around you. You don't understand what is happening. Your head starts to feel fuzzy. You sink into a crevice in your mind. An empty white room. Photo of support. Your shoulders feel heavy. A familiar voice whispers something unspeakable. Your eyes widen. It tells you to follow its lead. It says it's the only way out. It says that everything will be okay. Photo of betrayal. You pick up Mary's body and lift it down the staircase. She feels lighter than you think. You feel multiple eyes shift their gaze to you. You keep your eyes towards the ground. Photo of hope. You hear the sliding of a familiar door. A voice tells you to walk. A gust of wind enters the room as the light outside engulfs you. You keep your eyes towards the ground. Photo of a tree. As you face forward, you listen to the crunching of the grass and feel the coolness of the wind. You hear the leaves and the trees riffle as the sun begins to set, but you try to ignore it. It's all just a dream. Photo of a branch. You lay down Mari's body and look up for the first time. Small rays of light shine through the cracks in the leaves. You relish in its beauty and savor the moment. You think, even if this is all real, if you keep looking at the leaves, that everything will 
be okay. Photo of a rope. You hear pacing, the crunching of the grass sifting back and forth. You think you see a figure pick something off the ground, but you're not sure. You keep staring at the leaves overhead. Everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. Photo of hands. You hear shuffling. You hear dragging and creaking and pulling. Something is happening, but you refuse to look away from the leaves. Your head feels fuzzy again. You bite your tongue and attempt to wake up one last time, but it's no use. You're still here. Photo of legs. You feel a cold hand clutch yours. You try to jerk away, but it squeezes back, unwilling to let you go. The hand drags you backward. You look up and see your best friend for the first time, Basil. You see the tears falling from his tired eyes as he looks ahead. You suddenly realize that none of this is a dream. All of this is real. Photo of a lie. As you and Basil step into the house, you look back towards the trees and see it. The light engulfs it as it sways in the wind. For a moment, you feel at peace. You hate yourself for feeling this way. Is that all then? Is everything going to be okay now? Photo of... something. Suddenly, Basil stops. You look up at his eyes, but this time they're wide awake, staring at something. You turn your eyes toward it as well. An eye meets yours. Your heart sinks into your stomach. You shouldn't have looked back. You just shouldn't have looked. Alright, so let's go back to our original question. Does Sonny deserve forgiveness? I'm not only talking about whether his friends should forgive him, but also whether we, as the players, should forgive him. Obviously, the answer is yes, but why? Well, let's see, shall we? This is a little bit overwhelming, isn't it? Here, let's start from the beginning. There are a few things I want to touch upon about the events. Firstly, I saw some players being confused by this, that the accident was somehow premeditated. And I don't blame you, the photos without the descriptions is pretty misleading. Is that... is that smirk? I see? Yeah, pretty confusing. Um, but what's interesting is that even Sonny himself doesn't know if he did that on purpose or not. In Tall Forest, you can find a box hidden behind a fox wall, which had this message. On first glance, it seems that Sonny is just obsessing over the incident. But thinking about it from another perspective, is he somehow trying to convince himself that what he did wasn't on purpose? Considering what we've seen, I think it's more likely that this was entirely an accident and that he had no prior desire at all to cause her harm. Some players seemed to be confused about Basil's placement within this incident, and some weren't even aware that he was there at all. And if you look closely, visually, there are a ton of visual clues that hint at his presence. For example, the most obvious of which is that the photos are not from the perspective of Sunny, even though the descriptions are from Sunny's perspective. In a few other photos, you could also see Basil's hands, and the dead giveaway was Basil's reflection in Photo of Hope. You literally could not miss it, though I could understand why some players might mistake Sunny or and Basil together because they didn't have the full context on why Basil would even be there in the first place. Now regarding Basil's role within this incident, he's no mere bystander. It should be obvious by now that the plan to stage Murray's suicide was Basil's idea. The plan was conceptualized in photo of an idea, and Basil told Sonny about it in photo of support. Photo of hands also suggested that Sonny had no part in hanging Murray up. Basil did all of that by himself. Regarding Murray's cause of death, there's significant debate within the Mori community. Did she die in the news, or did she die on impact? Was she dead from the very start, or was she alive but 
paralyzed. This question matters because a definitive answer would mean pinning the blame for Mari's death directly on either Basil or Sonny. But if she was dead, that begs the question. Why was her eyes open at the time of death? Did she die with her eyes open and we just never got to see it until the final picture? Or was she alive the entire time, waking up only at the final moment? Unfortunately, I don't have any definitive answers to this question, but it does also mean that we cannot one-dimensionally say either Sonny or Basil was the direct cause for her death. Now, in the aftermath of the incident, one thing's been bugging me. Did the parents know about what the children did? And if so, what did they do? Well, I'm inclined to say that not only did they know about the entire situation surrounding Mari's death, but they also actively participated to help the children cover up the death. Let's go with the most damning piece of evidence first. You hear mom crying softly. There, there, Sonny. We'll protect you. Everything will be okay. We'll protect you. Now, just right there, there are some problems with this text. Protect you? From what? Protect you from what? And there's this, everything will be okay. Now, where have we heard that before? Mm -hmm. Right, we first heard that from Basil in a photo of support. And what was happening in that photo again? Right, Basil was promising to help Sonny cover up Mari's death. Could it be possible that the same thing was happening here as well? From a writing standpoint, that would be some brilliant foreshadowing. So already we can establish a narrative link between these two dialogues. My only daughter is gone. And you, you are my only son. I can't lose you as well. As well. As well? Why? Why would Sonny's mom think that she would lose Sonny? Was she afraid that Sonny might take the same course of action as Mari? But what would be the basis for her assumption? Just because Mari was suicidal doesn't mean that Sonny was. Where was this coming from? Or perhaps, did she know? Was she aware? Was she afraid that he would be sent to juvenile? Or perhaps, worse, prison? And there's more. Please be a good boy, Sonny. Please be a, a good boy. Why was Sonny's mom asking him to... No, practically begging him to be a good boy. When a phrase like this is used, it usually signifies that the person saying it wants the child to remain quiet, stay put, be a good kid, and behave yourself, while Sonny's mom and his dad took care of things. What things? Well, that's gonna be clear in just a second. You see a man shutting his car door and driving away. The sentence structure already seems off to me. For example, if you omit the phrase, shutting his car door, you would be left with, you see a man driving away. And that would be perfectly adequate to describe Sonny's dad leaving. There should be no need for the extra fluff. I mean, shutting the car door before driving away is a matter of course. So it must serve a greater purpose within the sentence. And the way it is written, the phrase, shutting his car door, seems to me, is put on emphasis. This gives me the feeling that Sonny's dad was leaving in like, a fit of anger or in a hurry. But why? Why was he leaving? Well, stay away. You are not my son. Maybe because he was angry at Sonny? But why would he be angry at Sonny? I mean, the kid literally just witnessed his sister's quote-unquote suicide. Uh, why is the treatment between the mom and the dad towards Sonny so different? Now, I want to turn your attention to a related but completely different question. How did Sonny and Basil get away with it? I mean, neither Basil nor Sonny used gloves, and Basil tied the rope with his bare hands. His fingerprints would be plastered all over that. And what about the DNA evidence? The signs of struggle near the staircase, the fact that Sonny and Basil both had Mari's DNA on them, and vice versa. What about the bruises or cuts on Mari's body? With a simple autopsy, the police might have found out that maybe her cause of death doesn't align with her injuries. And don't even get me started about the issues with alibi and when or where they were when Mari took her own life. I mean, we're talking about two 12-year-old kids right now. We're not exactly talking about criminal masterminds. They couldn't have thought over every single little detail even if they tried. They're too young for that. Any decent third-rate detective's gonna see through this plot of theirs. Unless... They had some help. And suddenly it all made sense. We'll protect you. I can't lose you as well. Please be a good boy. You are not my son. Everything will be okay. Sonny's parents, they helped him. They'd cover for him. 
It was them. It was them all along. They cleaned up the crime scene. They chopped down the tree. They spoke to the police on behalf of Sunny, or perhaps they never even called the police at all. Their marriage falling apart was the result of their differing attitudes towards Sunny. The dad leaving in anger, disowning his son. It all makes sense. So here is where we currently stand. Sunny pushed Mari, but it was an accident, and there was probably no premeditated ill will. It was Basil, not Sonny, who came up with the plan to stage Mari's suicide. It was also Basil who hung her up, not Sonny as was previously assumed. The uncertainty around Mari's death makes it impossible to pin her death on either Sonny or Basil, as we cannot determine who directly killed her. The parents knew about the children's actions and either 1. never contacted the police or 2. helped cover up the crime scene before the police could arrive. So beyond accidentally pushing Mari, Sonny had very little agency in matters that came afterwards. I think we could all agree that if the push was an act of malice and he came up with the plan, hung her up, cleaned up the crime scene by himself, took his parents, took the police, the paramedics, etc., which I don't know would require an evil mastermind at work, it would probably be more morally unacceptable for us, the players, to forgive him. Before you leave and reach your own conclusions about whether or not you could forgive Sonny for what he did, let me tell you one last story. Sonny and Mari were very close siblings. They would often spend time with each other and amongst their friends as kids. However, as they grew older, they started to grow more distant. Distant not in the sense that they weren't very close anymore, but that they couldn't spend a lot of time together. Mari was busy preparing for college, going to cram school, coming home late, and practicing the piano for hours on end. She couldn't afford to spend a lot of time with Sonny. Rest was never a given for Mari. She was infamous for being a perfectionist. Everything had to be perfect. Her scores must be high. She must attend every class. Her playing must be perfect. She was, in every sense of the word, a very ambitious, motivated, and hardworking go-getter. Hours and hours spent diligently in front of the piano, but hardly any time on resting, and even less on her dear brother. It was around this time that Sonny started taking an interest in music. He can often be found listening to Mari when she practices. There was even that one time when he was embarrassingly caught by Cal fiddling with his old mini violin. And that wasn't a coincidence. Sonny himself had long given up on the violin. However, if it meant getting to spend more time with her, well, he'd take it. And his efforts weren't in vain. His friends secretly took up jobs over the summer to afford him an actual violin on Christmas. Basil and Aubrey were selling cookies and lemonade. Hero and Mari, they worked at the bakery. And Kel, he had to wake up early and sell newspaper for the next three months. It was very clear that a ton of effort and money had been put into this Christmas present. More so than any typical friend group would give you. So when he broke it, Mari snapped. All their investments, all the hours of labor, all the hours spent in practice, all the pressure and expectations imposed on them, the recital was drawing near and they didn't have anything to show for it, much less a perfect performance. You can imagine her anger, but what about Sonny? What was his excuse? Well, sure, he was terrible at the violin, as to be expected. He was rusty, and he didn't know the piece they were playing very well. That could have incurred some anger, but was that really an excuse to break the violin? Sonny doesn't strike me as someone who'd have anger issues, at least on the surface since he always been the stoic type. You know, always the quiet kid, right? What could have possibly caused him to get so angry that he destroys his own violin? This goes right back to the beginning of our story and the root cause of their problem. Mari's perfectionistic tendencies, her desire for everything to be perfect led her to be busier and busier, which indirectly led her to spend less time with Sonny. In order to make up for this, Sonny decided to pick up the violin but he never really addressed the actual problem. The direct approach would have been to ask her to tune it down a notch and spend more time with them. Humans are not machines after all, they need rest. But his solution was to play into her perfectionistic tendencies and express his interest in playing along with her. We're very deep in speculation territory right now, but I think it's safe to say that she worked him to the bone, pushing him to his absolute limit forcing him to practice the same motions over and over again. From Sonny's perspective, he had no interest in the violin, no real dreams he wanted to pursue with it, nothing. His only goal was to spend time with her. But what did he get in return? 
hours of grueling practice with no observable results, fingers swelling up in pain, and a sister as focused and as ambitious and as pushy as they come. Perhaps this line of reasoning might not hold in front of his friends, especially Hero, given his emotional turmoil after hearing such a story. Sunny's actions were not at all justifiable, and he said himself, it was such a small thing to get worked up over. But it is understandable 